Today I've got a nice problem which comes from a pretty cool problem book called the Wohaskam County Problem Book. And so this is about problems from a fictional county in Minnesota. Okay, so let's see what we have here. We want to define a sequence a sub n by the one step recursion a sub n plus one equals two times a sub n plus one. And that's for all n bigger than or equal to zero. And then the question is, can we take an a naught? So can we pick a naught so that a1, a2, a3, a4, so on and so forth are all prime numbers? And of course, immediately we know that the answer is no, because if the answer was yes, then we would have some sort of generating sequence for prime numbers. But it's well known that no such generating sequence exists. And that's because if one such generating sequence did exist, there would be no use for the largest known prime number designation. Notice I said largest known prime number, not largest prime number, because of course there's no largest prime number. Okay, so let's maybe see what we can do here. First thing that I'll do is get a closed form for our sequence. And there's a couple ways to do this, but I'm gonna use my favorite way, which is generating functions. So let's set a of x equal to the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of a sub n x to the n. So this is known as the generating function for our sequence. And this is like a nice strategy for finding closed forms of recursively defined, like well, maybe linear recursively defined sequences. Okay, so anyway. Let's maybe pull out the first term, so that'll be a naught. Maybe I should say the zeroth term, then I have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of a sub n x to the n. And then next, I'll re-index that thing so that it starts at 0. So that'll give me something like this, a sub 0 plus, now I have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of a sub n plus 1, x to the n plus 1. But I'll take one of those x's and factor it out front. So notice if n is equal to 0, I start at a sub 1, but that's exactly what's going on here. If n is equal to 1, my first term, I start at a sub 1. So everything checks out. And the reason to do this is that so that we can apply the recursion to a n plus 1. So now let's apply the recursion to a n plus 1. That's going to leave us with a naught plus x times the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of two a n plus one all times x to the n. Now I'll split this into pieces. This gives me a naught plus x times the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of two a n x to the n, but maybe I'll bring the two out so I really have two x a to the n x to the n and then plus x, the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of x to the n. But now this guy right here, this sum as n goes from zero to infinity of a n x to the n is exactly our generating function. So that means I can rewrite this as a naught plus two x times a of x plus, and then we might say, well, what do we do with this? But, this term right here is exactly a geometric series where the common ratio is x. And the first term is also x if you consider the x out front, or 1 if you just consider what I have circled. Any way you look at it, you get x over 1 minus x using geometric series rule. And now from here, the strategy will be to solve for a of x and then re-expand this using you know series expansion techniques so that we can get a closed form. So let's first note that we have 1 minus 2x times a of x. That's from moving this bit over and then factoring out um, equals a naught plus x over 1 minus x. But that gives us a rational form for a of x. a of x is equal to a naught over 1 minus 2x plus x over 1 minus x times 1 minus 2x. Now we look in at this second term, this x over 1 minus x times 1 minus 2x, and we think, how can we simplify that? And motivated by something from a calculus class, we might think about 
partial fraction decomposition. And doing a standard partial fraction decomposition, we're able to pull this apart into 1 over 1 minus 2x and then minus 1 over 1 minus x. So putting this all together, we have a naught plus 1 over 1 minus 2x minus 1 over 1 minus x. Again, like I said, that's from a partial fraction decomposition. But now we can expand each of these as geometric series, keeping in mind here the common ratio is 2 times x, here the common ratio is x. So we'll end up with the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of a naught plus 1 times 2 to the n, and then minus 1, and then that's all times x to the n. Okay, so that looks good. But if you recall, that a sub n was the sum as a n, or as n goes to infinity, 0 to infinity of a sub n x to the n, we can equate coefficients, and we see that a sub n is really equal to the coefficient of x sub n over here. So it's a naught plus 1 times 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, so let's take that bit of information and move on. So we left ourselves with a nice closed form for the nth term of our sequence in terms of the zeroth term or the seed for our sequence. Now let's look over here at our goal. We want to decide if we can pick a naught so that all of these terms are prime. Notice that doesn't include a naught. That starts at a1. So that gives us motivation to re-express this in terms of a1 instead of a0. But that's actually not too hard to do. So notice we know immediately that a1 is 2 times a0 plus 1. That's just from this recursion with n equals 0. But then moving some things around, that gives us a0 is equal to 1 half times a1 minus 1. Okay, good. But now we can take this expression for a naught and plug it up here, and that'll give us a new expression for a n in terms of a one, which is good because that's in terms of one of the primes. So in fact, what we get is, let's see, a n equals two to the n times one half a1 minus 1, and then plus 2 to the n minus 1. So let's see, that's going to give us 2 to the n minus 1 times a1 minus 2 to the n minus 1 plus 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, but notice that we've got two kind of consecutive powers of 2 that we're subtracting here. And adding or subtracting powers of 2 is actually quite nice. And so we can subtract those two and leave us with just 2 to the n minus 1. Think about like subtracting the consecutive powers of 2, 32 and 16. 32 minus 16 is 16. And so likewise, 2 to the n minus 2 to the n minus 1 will be 2 to the n minus 1. So that leaves us with 2 to the n minus 1 times a1. And then we'll have plus 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1. Now I'm going to group these into parts. So I'll group this guy right here, and then I'll group this guy right here. And now let's notice that this guy right here, this 2 to the n minus 1 times a1, is always a multiple of a1. That's pretty clear. Now we want to ask, can this thing in green also be a multiple of a1? And in fact, it can if we let n equal a1 and apply Fermat's little theorem. So let's do that. So let's first look at a sub a sub 1. And notice that that is equal to something times a sub 1. Well, it's 2 to the a sub 1 minus 1, but it actually doesn't matter what that is. So I'll write that as capital N times a sub 1, where I gobble up that power of 2 there. And then plus 2 to the a1 minus 1 minus 1. But again, like I said, because a sub 1 is a prime, 
And I guess we're assuming it's a prime not equal to two. We have to look at the case when a1 is equal to two on its own, but I'll let you guys check the case when a1 is equal to two. We can apply Fermat's little theorem, and we know that two to the a1 minus one will be one, but then you subtract one and you get zero. So putting this all together, we see that this is congruent to zero mod a1. Okay, so now let's take this information up and then we're about ready to finish it off. So in the last board we showed that a sub a sub 1 was congruent to 0 mod a1. But that's the same thing as saying that a1 divides a sub a1. Okay, so we have a sub 1 divides a sub a sub 1. But then we can also look at the following inequality. So we've got a sub a sub 1 is equal to... 2 to the a sub 1 minus 1 times a sub 1, and then plus 2 to the a sub 1 minus 1 minus 1. And so that's just using the formula we came up with in the last board. But let's notice that this is most definitely bigger than a sub 1. Maybe how could we show that? Well, maybe the way that I see to show this easiest is to look at a function f of x, which is 2 to the x minus 1 times x plus 2 to the x minus 1 minus 1, and then show that f of x is bigger than x after some certain point, which shouldn't be too hard to do with calculus, but I won't do that here. So let's see what we've got. a sub 1 divides a sub a sub 1, and a sub a sub 1 is strictly bigger than a sub 1. But then, since a sub 1 is a prime, remember that was like one of our assumptions, we know that a sub 1 is not equal to 1 because 1 is not a prime number. But what does that mean? That means that a sub a sub 1 has a divisor from the following list, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to a sub a sub 1 minus 1. So in other words, it has a divisor which is not equal to itself and not equal to 1, which means that a sub a sub 1 is not prime. That's exactly where we wanted to end up, and that's a good place to stop.